Exercise Harimau Shakti 2025, has moved into its high-intensity phase, with Indian and Malaysian troops executing advanced tactical maneuvers, counterinsurgency and counterterrorism modules, ambush drills and helleborn slithering operations. Mixed teams are refining joint patrolling, decision-making and battlefield management through rigorous command post-exercise sessions. Held at Rajasthan's Mahajan Field Firing Range till December 18, the drill strengthens interoperability under UN Chapter 7, boosting preparation for peacekeeping missions, and showcasing deepening India-Malaysia defense cooperation. In a major boost to global naval cooperation, India's MDL, the Indian Navy and the Brazilian Navy have signed a trilateral MOU to strengthen maintenance and sustainment of Scorpion-class submarines. The pact enables sharing of technical expertise, best practices and engineering solutions, while opening doors to wider naval platform collaboration. Signed during the Navy Chief's Brazil visit, the agreement deepens India-Brazil maritime ties, enhances fleet readiness, and reinforces strategic cooperation across the Indian and South Atlantic Oceans. The Indian Army is exploring a high-altitude variant of Sagar Defense's Varna Heavy Lift drone to replace hazardous helicopter supply runs along the LAC. Designed to deliver 150 to 200 kilograms to posts above 18,000 feet, the upgraded drone will feature enlarged rotors, a modified engine, de-icing systems and reinforced landing gear. With up to 60 minutes endurance in sub-zero temperatures, a single Varna detachment could support 15 to 20 remote posts daily, cutting helicopter risks and boosting frontline logistics efficiency. In a major leap for India's battlefield communications, Bard Electronics Limited has unveiled the first prototypes of its tactical communication system in Bengaluru. Engineered for modern high-threat environments, the rugged vehicle-mounted shelters offer encrypted voice, data, and video connectivity to frontline units. With multi-layer security, high bandwidth links, and strong resistance to jamming and EW threats, the modular tactical communication system aims to replace legacy networks and provide the Indian Army with a secure digital combat backbone. Hidden within Hyderabad's research center Emirat, India's top-secret project VEDA, is gearing up for its maiden launch in early 2026. Built on K-4 missile technology, this rapid-response all-solid rocket can loft two-ton military satellites into orbit within just 72 hours of activation. Designed to restore space assets during war, VEDA will launch from dispersed inland sites, complicating enemy tracking. Its first test will place an 1,800 kg dummy payload into a 600 km orbit, marking a major leap in India's wartime space resilience. As India begins replacing its aging and 32 transport fleet, the Air Force is evaluating 40 to 80 medium transport aircraft with 18 27-ton payload capacity and the ability to operate from high-altitude landing grounds. Lockheed C-130J, Embraer's KC-390, and Airbus's A-400M are in contention, but the C-130J stands out for its proven Himalayan performance, strong global fleet, and TSL partnership. However, limited technology transfer remains a major hurdle, as India pushes for deeper indigenization. The Indian Army's hot air balloon expedition from Bhopal to Pune has completed a 750 km journey across Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, culminating in a record-breaking 8-hour 44-minute flight, the longest hot air balloon ride in India. The feat, now entered in the Asian Book of Records, showcased exceptional teamwork and endurance. Along the route, soldiers engaged local youth, promoting adventure, discipline and awareness about military life. A soaring testament to adventure, professionalism and inspiration. India has given a restrained response to Russia's Su-57E technology transfer and assembly offer, prioritizing only a limited purchase of 40 to 60 jets. The IAF views the aircraft as an interim long-range strike platform, 
while preserving true fifth-generation capability for the indigenous AMCA. Despite Russia proposing a larger 60-70 to 70 jet deal with local production, India remains cautious due to stealth concerns, integration challenges, and overlapping procurement plans. The move reflects a pragmatic strategy focused on capability bridging, not long-term dependence. In a significant shift to India's fifth-generation fighter roadmap, the AMCA MK2 is now expected to slip to 2040, driven by delays in the Safran GTR E1 20 kN engine program. Formal approval is only likely in 2026, with a first ground run pushed to 2032 and certification stretching to 2037 to 38. To avoid a capability gap, India may procure additional AMCA MK1 jets or produce early MK2 airframes with GEF 414 engines for later retrofit. Designed for plug-and-play integration, the new engine remains crucial for supercruise and high-end stealth, but its timeline continues to dictate the pace of the entire program. In a major development, HAL believes the Indian Air Force may place additional Tejas MK-1A orders beyond the already contracted 170 aircraft. With aging Jaguars, MiG-21s, MiG-29 UPGs, and Mirage 2000 set for retirement, a serious capability gap looms through the next decade. As the advanced Tejas MK-2 won't enter production before 2032, the MK-1A emerges as the only reliable bridge, supported by a stable production line, growing weapon integration, predictable costs, and urgent squadron strength needs. This may push the IAF to expand its MK-1A fleet significantly in the coming years. In a game-changing move, DRDO's research center Emirat has invited Indian industry and startups to co-develop quantum-based avionic sensors, the core technology for future sixth-generation fighters. These quantum systems promise centimeter-level navigation without GPS, detection of stealth aircraft, and ultra-secure synchronization in fully denied environments. RCI has already demonstrated breakthrough quantum accelerometers and magnetometers and now seeks partners to ruggedize and miniaturize them for Mach 2, high G combat jets. The roadmap targets integration into AMCA MK2 and upcoming 6 gen platforms, with DRDO funding up to 90% of development, ensuring the entire technology remains Indian from chip to airframe. That's all for now. Hope you like this video. Please like, share and subscribe for daily news updates. Thanks for watching.